Well, I'm excited to share with you today a lesson I call Improvisation with Control. So there's going to be a lot of just exciting improvised things that we're going to do today. But at the same time, I think you can have quite a bit of control. And we're using a product that is from Daniel Smith and it's called Gold Gesso. It's an acrylic gesso. I love it. It's iridescent. It's a beautiful product. And we're also using spray paint and I generally use this Krylon which is um, an artist quality and this one's even called 18 karat gold. And you just give it a good shake. You always have to hear that ball rolling around. And so I've, I've sprayed a combination of the gold spray and you could use brass, silver, whatever color you want. I'm using gold in this one. And this is the acrylic gold gesso. Now we have a couple of other products we're going to be using too. And one is a stencil. Let me show you this on the black ground here. You can see this one looks like two trees. But what I love is that you can just kind of pick little areas and then when you spray into it against a dark background, you get some of these gorgeous, what looks like I really am good at negative painting, but what, what it really is is just a good trick. So any stencil will do. I probably will be using this one. We're also going to be using a masking. Now this is what, if you want to resist, like for example, these um, roots here on the bottom of the onions, I actually mask those. And one of the easiest ways to do it is with a palette knife, where you would just dip it into the masking and simply trail it along. Or in, in the case, the picture that I'm doing today, I'm actually going to be doing radishes. And I dip this little saute stick in and just ran some little roots, the little white roots that you see at the bottom of the radishes. So let me give you a quick review of some of the subjects that I've enjoyed. I, I especially love this one right here, the onions. And one of the things that's so interesting about both the gesso and the spray is the resist. So for example, if I mix up a beautiful dark color. I'll pull my palette in here. A little Quinn burnt orange and a little French ultramarine blue. Get a nice dark color here. I can get a resist. So for example, if I want to come in here and make this a lot darker, I can just paint right on top of this. And the other thing that's pretty cool is you can paint on top of the gesso. So if I decide I want to paint on top of the gesso, I can. But look at how I can pop this out with just coming in with some more darks. Ooh, that, felt, that feels really good. Just to really pop that. And then a lot of times when I'm looking at a, a finished painting, like I was just doing this earlier, <laughs> I'm looking and going, oh boy, this is looking a little gaudy. So look what I can do. This is the gold gesso here. I can paint right on it. So gesso doesn't mean that it's going to all resist. You can actually paint on it. So if things get a little too gaudy for you, you can push it back. I'm pretty excited about that. So let's quickly look at some of these pictures. I'm going to start out by showing you some of these earlier paintings that I did. And I'm not sure how many years, this is maybe five, six years ago. And I was doing full sheets. It's pretty exciting. And I mostly like vegetables and fruit. So you can see some peppers. Here I have some artichokes. And the interesting thing is these really still aren't done yet. I, I do have a few more shapes I want to put in them, but I never give up on a painting. I will finish these. And this one, I love this one. This is a, of course, a abstracted rocks, but you can see here I've got some collage papers that I've incorporated. <laughs> this is actually a polka dot 
uh, tissue paper. And I just love these polka dots. I think that's just so cool. And just the slight warm colors. This one I actually did with black acrylic as well as the gold acrylic. But um, the one I'm going to do for you today is going to be only watercolor. Here's another one with rocks. Just uh, again with a lot of collage and a lot of spraying and into stencils and color sanding into stencils. And then some papers that are very rock-like, like cheery and um, I guess mostly cheery. This is one, I just love this one. Good old strawberries. I remember when I poured these out on the counter and took the photograph. The sun was coming in and I thought, well, I'm going to go for that great cast shadow. So I do have here a mixture of black acrylic plus watercolor plus the gold gesso plus the spray. So this really is quite an adventure in mixed media. Now these are half sheet size and this is one of my favorites and I, I when I go to markets all over the world, but right here in Washburn too, I love it when they come out with the onions and they still have the tops and the tops are starting to droop a little bit. To me, there's hardly a better subject than that. And so I'm going to be doing radishes for you. But this is a cool subject too. These are Chinese lanterns. My mom raised these. So I, when I do these, I think of my mom. She, she, she called it a weed, but to me, they're beauty. And here you can see I've added an additional color. There were quite a few little greens mixed in with the warm lantern colors. You can see some of the green leaves and some of the, um, just some of the buds. And so I decided to add a third color. So I not only have the path of dark, and the gold gesso, I have an additional color in the background. This one is just the path of dark with the gold gesso. And another subject I absolutely love, these are the onions again. And, you know, with the nice long roots coming out. Oh, so much fun. These are pomegranates. And it, I remember how exciting it was the first time I actually saw pomegranates hanging on a tree. I, I was, I think, oh, where was I? Oh man, I can't remember now. Greece, I think. But it was very exciting to see, actually see these hanging on the tree. And again here you can see where I've added an additional color. I like, I decided to do a complimentary cooler color and I do like it with the gold gesso. I think it adds a nice touch. So that is an option for you. Here's another one with an additional color. You can see the artichokes. And some here I didn't use that spray that looks like roots. But I used just numbers and letters and added the purple, which in this case is the color of the artichoke. So I'm echoing the color in the background, not creating a compliment. And, aha, you can tell I love rocks. I still had a little bit of that tissue paper left, so I had to try it again. The subject I've chosen to paint today are radishes. Our youngest son and his wife have opened a restaurant called the Fat Radish. So in honor of that, I said, okay, I've got to do radishes. And I love radishes anyway, because they have all these wonderful little roots sticking out. Here you can see uh, the variety in the color and the path of dark and the gold gesso and then a little additional spray. So I'm basically going to do a picture similar to this. So let's get started. So here we are filming a few days before Christmas, snow on the ground. So we obviously don't have any markets out there. But this is the idea. If I could, I would actually have these radishes here with the roots and everything intact. So we're just going to kind of wing it. And one of the things I always like to start out with is simply wetting the subject. So I'm going to start with the subject. Very often I start with the background. But in this case, we're going to start with the subject. And I'm going to start with just some Scarlet Lake, which is just a beautiful orangey color. You can see it doesn't move in water. 
I think it's so interesting how some colors move in water and some don't. And then alizarin crimson gives me the darker red that we need. And see, alizarin does move in water. So as I put this color around the edge, it, it is moving. And I just like to save as much white as I can. Now there, the roots to these are white. So I'm just gonna pull in ever so little color, but it's mostly gonna stay white. And there's a little touch of white up here too. So let's do another one. We'll start here wet it. In fact, let's do two at once. So we're just going to wet the shape. And you can see when I did my drawing, I just sort of I didn't want to line them up. I thought it would be just kind of fun to overlap them. So there's one on top. I started with that. Now I'm, I'm thinking about the roundness here. So I'm saving some whites as we go around. Here too. This is my Scarlet Lake again, really heavy. Not, it's a pretty heavy color. And then I'm going to go into the Alizarin Crimson at, on the edges. And that, I don't even have to move it very much because it, it does move in water. But I am thinking about the roundness. So I just keep pulling that around. Then as I get here, I'm just going to wet the stem and let a little bit of that color roll in there. And a little bit of this color actually does come up the stem too. So it's really important that you do that. Anytime you look at the leaves of your flower, or in this case, the vegetables, very often a little bit of that color actually goes up into the leaves. So we're going to come around here with the reds and save some whites here and there. Pull up a little bit of that into the stems. Now some of these could be just a little bit darker. So I'm going to take some cobalt blue. Cobalt is the complement over here. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of pure cobalt along the edges just to get some additional shadow. I could have put it on first, but I really like just putting it in there while the paint is wet. You can see, boy, that really helped give us a little bit more depth of color here. And that was the pure cobalt put on there. Let's do the last ones here. And we've got our stem. And one more over here. Now this one's in the back, so I probably will end up making this one a little bit darker. Start out again with my Scarlet Lake. It just amazes me how you can put this color into that really wet surface and it absolutely doesn't move. So you can see how easy it is to save those whites. Nice. Now the alizarin. And this one's going to be a little darker here. wasn't exactly the improvisation I had in mind, but it's not going to hurt a thing because we're going to be putting a dark background in there. So I'm just going to lift up a little bit of the color and proceed like nothing happened. Okay, now we'll pull a little bit of this color down the stem. Up, up into the leaf. And 
And then I'm going to come in again with some more of this pure cobalt, especially over here where I want it a little darker. I might even come in and go just even a little bit darker here and there. So there we go. We've got the radishes. Well, we're ready to start thinking about the leaves. And one of the things I like to do when I'm painting leaves is I definitely like to start with the leaves furthest back. And this is true, even when you're painting a flower, I always start with the petals in the back and then move to the front because the ones at the very top are gonna to be catching the light. So we're just gonna start by wetting a few of these leaves, especially the ones that are behind here. So I'm gonna start here the one behind. And I like to work with wet, a wet surface. So it's actually a wet and wet style of working, but the fun thing is you're only wetting the part you want to paint. Boy, is that nice. So it does give us some hard edges and some soft edges. And there's a lot of ways to make greens. My favorite is Quin Gold with Antwerp Blue. And the reason I chose, chose this color is Antwerp will go all the way to a very dark color. And see, when you mix it with Quin Gold, you get this beautiful olive -y color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just the Quin Gold Pure. And this is how I like to do my greens. I like to put the color down as a pure color and then put the blue on top so because these are back a little bit I'm gonna put in some of the gold first and just keep it free don't get too winged out about it we don't want too many hard edges so now I'm just gonna let this Antwerp come in Antwerp does move in water that's a nice a nice little feature to know so when I put the Antwerp down, I know it's going to move. And these actually have holes in them, these plants. So I want, it, I want it to be a little bit rough, a little dotty and holes, darker here, lighter there. How much variety can we get? This is behind. got to be careful not to get too dark because this is going to have a path of dark behind it. So I better be careful here. And then I'm just going to sprinkle a few little dots in here too. One thing we don't want is perfection. How much variety can we get in these leaves? Same here, I think we'll just come in. And just let the edges float out. Perfect. Now, as we move closer to the front, I definitely want to see a brighter color. So now I'm going to wet this one. And I'll wet this one because it's the next layer coming up. This one's got some little holes in it and some interesting little vines, veins, excuse me. So what I'm going to do is use a brighter color. This is my Windsor Yellow. And over here, we're going to put the Windsor Yellow in there. You can see already, it's a lot brighter. It's a beautiful primary color. I might even put a little bit of this color in these other leaves. 
just sprinkle it in. I want to get some nice textures going too. Now using the same blue, this is my Antwerp again, but it's going to look very different because it's mixed with a different base. And of course we're going to pull these down. Now on this one I'm going to just paint in between the stems, leaving those white. It wouldn't hurt to leave a number of these edges really almost white. I think I might lift a little color off of that one. And now over here, we're going to have another one. This one I'm going to leave almost just yellow. So you can see I'm trying to get some nice variety here. This one I'm going to leave much lighter. Same here. So I can do a lot of adjusting on these leaves later. What's important now is to simply get some color down. I'm going to make it a little darker on this side. Coming out to lighter. A little darker here in the centers. Coming out to lighter. This is salt, just table salt. And see, a little table salt is going to do wonders to make these little white holes. Ooh. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm talking about either water marks or these little white, little bugs. They eat little holes. I just love that. Now I want to get a little more of this warm color into the leaves. They're just looking a little anemic. So just taking a little bit of this warm color, I'm just going to come in and layer a little bit of that warm color in here. It's going to gray it down a bit, but it's really going to look better. See, the, color, the ones that are behind, I'm just going to lay in a little bit of this color. Oh, what a difference. That feels really good. You can see now we're we're getting we're bouncing back some of that warm color into the leaves. Love it. Here now we'll show just a little bit of the dark on this side. Pull it out to a light. It's a nice contrast here. Put a little bit of warm on here. Oh my, this is fun. And of course we do have the warm color coming up from the radish itself. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these leaves. Why don't I move in closer? We're all set now to think about our path of dark in the background. And meanwhile, I, you can see I've thrown a little salt here and there. I think I'm going to add a little more salt on this particular leaf over here. 
And we're going to let this dry. When I come back, we're going to put on the bath of dark. Well, so far I'm pretty happy with these little spots that I wanted to get. That salt did a nice job. And you can see my leaves are on the light side intentionally so that I'm going to get the highest contrast now when I come in with my dark path. Now I'm not just going to paint the whole background dark. What I'm going to do is design this dark so that it kind of dances in and out. Not, these are kind of in the middle. So I'm, this path of dark is going to either go off like a third here or maybe a third here and down here and up here. So I'm, I'm going to zig and zag around a bit. I think I'm just going to go with my favorite dark, which happens to be quinacridone burnt orange. So let's get quite a bit of it mixed up here. It's a very strong value nine color. You want to pick colors that are going to give you everything from a one to a nine. This is going to go all the way. And then the other color I'm going to choose is French ultramarine blue. And what I like about these two is they form a black. You can keep it on the warm side or you can keep it on the cool side. I think I'm going to cool it off a little more. And the good news is if you make some airs, it will lift. It's a liftable black. Now it isn't as, um, it doesn't dry as clear as I'd like, but I, it's worth it just to have this liftable black. So I'm just going to come in here now and start painting in a dark. I've got, I haven't masked anything but the roots. So as I go around some of these shapes, I'm just going to have to use my number eight round here and just take my time. The paper's dry. I've got a lot of control. It's really fun. I just love this size brush. You can, it's got a point. It's a synthetic brush. It just, it's so wonderful. It just gives you lots of control. So we're going to start in the heart of the painting here. I might just go a little bit cooler as I come out. I'm putting a little bit more blue in it. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to spray on top of this in a little while. <laughs> and we're not going to have a lot of control when we're spraying. We just have to hope it goes where we want it to go. So now as I come out here, I want to come out to an edge of the paper. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all decide because this is an open area here I'm going to carry this on now these are masked you can see they're resisting it's nice So now I'm getting to the stage where I have to make a decision. Where am I going to go with this? And I think I obviously, I'm going to leave this like a rest area. And I'm going to paint around these, these shapes right here and go off the edge. Now this is the part I want you to remember. This is really important. As we go around these shapes and get to the edge of our paper, we also have to lose the edge. So I'm going to take it off the edge of the paper here and bookend away over here. But now I'm going to start wetting my brush, taking off some of this moisture and losing this edge. I don't want to leave it as a hard edge. I want it to be a lost edge. So I'll pop out some dark here. This is all going to be pretty dark around my subject. But as I get to this rest area here, I'm just going to lose it into a nice lost edge. I might even throw in a little bit of warm color. I like that. Sparkle a little warm in there. Ooh, that felt good. 
Over here we'll go dark again. And I'm going to go back really, really dark when I'm next to my subject here. Really dark. As dark as I can make it. But as I move away from the subject here, I'm going to go lighter. So really dark next to the subject. As I move away from the subject, I wet my brush, shake it out, take a little extra moisture off. And you have to lose this edge before you go too far. And I just love having a little bit of that warm color in there. So I'm just going to throw some more in there. See, don't let this edge dry. <laughs> Trouble. No drying. A little more red. I'll go into a little bigger brush here. Yeah, that's looking nice. Can even have some broken shape with water. So now we're going to continue. I'm going to remix my Quinburnt Orange, my French Ultramarine Blue, nice and dark. Paint around a few of these. Roots. Love those roots. So now I'm going to take this dark pretty much off the page here. It's really fun. I love doing this negative painting. I mean, I could have masked this and just did it faster. But I don't know, there's just something kind of cool about just playing with it a little bit. You know, things like throwing in water, break it up a bit. Here I'm going to come in with this lost edge. Dark next to the subject, but as I move to the edge, I'm going to do a lost stitch. And I'm going to throw in a little bit of that red. And whatever's on this side's got to come over to the other side. We call that bookending. You'll hear me talk about that almost every lesson. <laughs> so I'm just going to now go ahead and finish this and he'll be able to see it sped up. Some of these big open shapes here are going to be beautiful when we spray later. So don't worry about that. And if you're interested, I do have this available in a kit for it, too. So if you want to do the same picture, you can.
Okay, now it's decision time. Where am I going to pull my extra darks? You can see I came down here. And I'm going to work it over here. Lose that edge. So I think what I'm going to do now is pull it right here. So I'm going to go off dark up here. mixing my dark kind of random like this it's it goes between warm and cool feels good and I'm going to end my dark here so now this is just going to come in with lost edge light lighter and just a lost edge And I'm also going to add some of that warm. Just throw it right in there. So now I'm going to pull my dark over here. So right over here. Kind of pop out this leaf here. this edge again. Wet it, shake it, come in with this extra water. Notice how I take a little bit of the water. I wet it, shake it, I take a little bit out. If you come in with too much water, you'll create a bleed back. And then of course I do love that red. Let's throw some more in here. That's my Scarlet Lake again. It's one of it's the brightest color on my palette. Love it. So, we're almost done with our background. It was fun doing this negative painting on this dry paper in control. Love it. Okay, so now this is just going to get lost. Lost. Red. I like some of the red I managed to splatter on my leaves too. Oh, nice. Looks to me like I need just a little bit more. Looks to me like I need a little bit more bright red right, right on here. Ooh, yeah. So we'll do any adjusting or fixing later. So again, we're going to uh, let this dry and I'm gonna come back and do the gold gesso. So years ago, when this product came out, Daniel Smith did it. Wow, fabulous. It's called the world's best gold acrylic gesso, and it really was. He set the world on fire. I've had people come to workshops with me in Europe and prepared all their papers with this gold acrylic gesso, because you can paint on it. And their, and their paintings had this almost Oh, I don't medieval look to them. They, you know, a little bit of a sparkle. I loved them. Well, then they discontinued the product. We were having a fit. 
But I'm happy to announce that due to popular, you know, people let them know we really miss your product and they came back. And it's actually a little different, it's even better. Now it's called an acrylic gesso iridescent gold. And I like it because it's got just a little bit more bling to it. I also like the fact that it comes in a jar with a screw top versus this can that you had to pry open. So I'm quite happy with the product. I'm going to use my good brushes and people, you're probably wondering, well, wow, with an acrylic you're going to use your good watercolor brushes? But I'm just going to make sure I clean them up good when I'm done. Soap and water. I just like, if I'm going to do a good product, meaning my painting, <laughs> I have to use good products to get there. So I'm just going to take a chance. So I'm just going to dip into this gesso and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on these edges. I'm going to lose some of the color. I'm also going to clean this out in my water here and lose this edge. See, gesso is water based. So I'm just going to put this around the edges here. Come around the edges. Then I'm going to clean my brush and come in and lose this edge. I might even throw a little on here. I just love this. So keep it free. Wet it, lose it. You want to have those lost edges. So all of these edges out here are going to get the gold gesso with a lost edge. Notice how I'm working on a board now. Very easy to lose the edge, just don't use too much water. I always shake it out, take a little extra moisture off, and I start from the outside and work in. Shake it, touch it, come in and work in from the, the source of the gold go in. Oh, this is fun. Oh, this is fun. Love this bling. What a beautiful product. Lose the edges. One more corner. Come in, lose the edge. I'm even thinking about throwing in a little red into this too. Just love that little extra red. And see, this is water base. So you can mix your watercolors in it. Now we got, we've actually got red gesso now. Ooh, this is fun. Am I improvised? That's what we like. Now I just noticed that this dark doesn't bookend over here. So I'm going to take a little bit of this dark over here. A 
wet my brush and just lose the edge again. Oh, that feels better. There, now we can see it. Once again, we're just going to let this dry. Now you can see my path of dark, very pronounced. And the best part is yet to come. We're going to take this acrylic spray, shake it really well, and using the stencil, we're going to come in and add some final textures. As a final thought, I wanted to mention that this will be available as in a kit form, where you'll get the drawing, and a reference to look at, and a picture of the finished piece. And I also have, uh, if you'll remember, the Chinese lanterns. I have that in the kit, and the pomegranates. And here we have the artichokes. And see, you get the finished painting, but you also get these lovely references that many times, I remember taking that picture when I was at a market in Europe. Ooh, so much fun. And the onions. So reference, picture, drawing, and in some cases, a step-by-step -step how to do it. So these will be available. You'll see it online. Just You can talk to Jonathan. And otherwise, get busy and draw your own. They're usually the best. So I'm just giving my sprayer a good shake you can hear the ball in there if you don't have a ball rolling around there's something wrong that's really important anytime you have a metallic any spray that's metallic you have to hear that and now here you can see my stencil and what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick air, this real interesting simple part here i don't want this real busy so over here there's some very nice very simple and I'm just going to take a chance that I can aim pretty good and I'm going to just spray in here. I mean, one should really make the sign of the cross before they start because this is, this is going to be tricky. So I always recommend just a little practice on the back. And see, look at that's pretty close and look at the control. Oh, let's hope it works. Now this is toxic. You should really be doing this outside. I'm just doing it in here because I can. <laughs> no, there's no class going on right now. Just me. And I want this to look like they're going in the same direction. So that looks pretty good right there. So I'm just gonna come in and do a little spray right here. I love to spray right over the gold. Now well, let's see what we got. Oh yeah, that's fun. Let's try it again over here. Again, I like this upward movement and a few little shapes out here. So I'm just gonna take a chance here and out here right on top of the gold. <laughs> I like it over here too I don't even protect anything I just take a chance once in a while you go where you weren't planning and too bad oh yeah that looks nice I love it so now we're gonna come up here this is why I like these big open areas now my paper is getting a little rumpled. <laughs> Maybe one more little shot right here. Oh yeah. And one last little play in here. I always think about the general movement. See, these are moving like this, so is this. 
So I'm just going to come in, check your nozzle. That's it. Well, that was fun. I love it. So now all we have to do is a little bit of fine touching up. So I'm going to simply make some adjustments. And you would have to do this on any painting. So I'm looking at this and this are so similar. So let's just come in here with some blue. This is plain old Antwerp. Let's just come in here and give it a little more contrast. Pull that around. Oh yeah, that felt good. Let's, let's repeat that color somewhere else. How about right over here? A little more contrast. This is behind, so it would actually be a little darker. And now we can do a mixture of some gold and Antwerp. It's a beautiful olive -y color. So we could just do a little bit, a suggestion of some veining. Wet our brush, soften the edges. So it always feels good to come in and just do a little bit of this final touching up. Now I'm adding just a little primary gold again. Same here, this needs a little more color. Let's pop this up a little bit with a little more gold. It's Windsor Yellow. Same here, we'll just give it a little bit more dark. This is the Antwerp and Quin Gold. Lose the edge. It's all about lost and found edges. Same here. This is get this is a no-brainer. You can see here this is in the foreground, so this has got to be darker. So we'll definitely come back here. Go just a little bit darker in the center here. And again, just lose the edges. Oh yeah, it's not going to take too much. A little, little gold. Another bright gold here. That feels good. Just a little bit more contrast. So this is why I didn't spend a whole bunch of time with these before, because I knew once the background went in, it was time to do just a little bit of adjusting. Yeah. Now the fun. There's, I, I have all this masking on here. Take off the masking. It's going to expose more of these whites. Don't throw the masking on the floor now. I'll make sure it gets in the garbage. And you can see I did spray a little bit on my radishes, but it's okay. <laughs> I never. And if I can try painting over, if I feel I just got, I need a little more color, I don't have a problem coming in with more color. And I always like pulling a little extra red into those leaves. See, we've got, I love the hint of red in the background. And so now, 
we'll push that red up just a little bit brighter. Look at that, I'm painting right over the spray. Why, it's a miracle. That doesn't always happen. Let's pull a little red on those greens here and there. Oh, I could play all day, but I think I'm going to have to call this done. And what I really should do is put it in a mat. There. Great. Well, I hope you enjoy this lesson. It's, it's certainly one of my favorites because I love the spontaneity of coming in layer, later with that spray. And I just love echoing the color of your subject in the background. So no matter what your subject is, try to pull a little bit of it into your leaves, into your background. Enjoy. Enjoy.